SWAT tackle here. Uh, let's do a quick moment to compare the Smith & Wesson shields. These are both in 9, but uh, as you can see we have the performance model or performance center. Uh, this one does have a manual safety and this is your standard Smith & Wesson shield without a safety. Um, added the talon grips. Um, this one has the original grips that this one had or has but with without any of the talon grips on them. Um, you can see this is the new new Smith & Wesson. It's the 2.0. I uh, did videos on that, and as you can tell, the grips texture on the original shield is absolutely horrible. This feels it's almost similar to the Talon grips, but um, you know it's it's a little bit different. It feels like it's basically if you ever felt stippled grips, that's basically what they did. And you know, overall, this is no need of anything to assist with the grip. So that's why I'm going to leave like it is. Uh, my shield was the exact same way. It's almost, it kind of reminds me of uh, like an orange peel. And that's, that's what it kind of looks like. That's what it kind of feels like to me. And just kind of holding it, it won't slip out of your hand like that. So if you put some talon grips on it, this thing going on anywhere. And then these grips are the same way. Once you get a hold of this gun, it ain't going anywhere. Um, of course, this is loaded. Um, let's see here. Let's kind of compare a Glock. Um, this is the Gen 4. Uh, it's just enough to get by. Um, this grip is a lot better I think um, this basically if you ever felt a stipple gun it's, it's almost like that's basically what they just did just stippled it it almost looks like it too um, as you see these have like little squares which is fine and dandy but um, I didn't really see a whole lot of a need to add talon grips to this but what I did do is add my own personal little grips there in the finger and I tried also doing that so far they haven't fell off um, basically what you use is uh, like grip tape for stairs so I thought I'd do a kind of quick video kind of comparing these two guns um, same caliber they're the same size uh, there's a couple of different differences which I will talk about. The biggest thing you see is the cuts in the barrel. It's also ported, which I'll show. Um, it's got fiber optic sights. Uh, I think I believe these are true glue. I'm not sure. Uh, trigger. The triggers are is different. And also this one has a manual safety. But also as you can tell with the barrels kind of noticed this just a little bit ago you can see the where they both say nine millimeter if you notice the hoods of these are different this this is the performance center it's more flat all the way along it kind of slopes down a little bit but as you can see with this one it's a standard one it kind of it's kind of up high and then it curves downwards. As you see, there's a more of an angle there, which, which you can kind of see right there. That's where your angle is down. This kind of just has like a gradual slope to it. It's kind of interesting. Um, see, barrels ported, and with ported barrels, you see all that dirt and grime there. Not dirt and grime, but um, you see all that powder that's baked on there. Both these guns have been shot. Both of them haven't been cleaned. Um, as you see the barrel, it's not as bad. So let's go ahead and strip these. Oh, I'll talk about triggers real quick. So you, as you guys know, 
with my trigger. I think that's the reset. It's not. It's almost got like a little and here, there it goes. They upgraded the trigger. Um, they ported the barrel and the slide. They also enhanced the trigger. They added, you know, fiber optic sights, as you can see. That's basically, from what I understand, that's all they did. Um, so we'll go ahead and show the trigger. It feels lighter. As you can see, when you re release, click, and bang. They don't have that. Now something interesting, which I tried. Um, from what I noticed, the only thing I think they did, obviously this has a safety, so it's a little bit different. But I think they changed some of the springs and stuff in here. So let's go ahead and take, this is my standard shield. Let's go ahead and take the performance center slide. Let's go ahead and put it on here. Okay, now let's try this trigger when we did this notice it'll take away something so you hear that click bang it don't have that false reset click bang and what I think it is, is because they changed, um, obviously, some of the upper parts of this. Let's go ahead and show you these side by side. Um, as far as I know, the recoil spring is the same. Bear is a little bit different, obviously, since it's ported. Um, the biggest thing is your striker blocks. If you can see here, see how this is this performance center. You see how... That silver thing there. You see how rounded it is? Apparently not. But as you can see, that's kind of rounded. And that's the striker block. And you can see on this one, it's real, there's a really sharp, distinct edge. There's a little bit of roundness to it. Um, but as you can see, it's definitely a lot straighter. So I'm thinking that's what's giving that false reset. Um, of course, you know, they changed a couple other things, but the only way to fix that with your standard shield would be to, they have uh, kits, trigger kits, like the Apex trigger kits, which comes with a new striker block and everything like that. I think that's what is fixing that thing because the performance center slide on their standard frame fixes that false reset so obviously it's not anything to do with the trigger in the frame it's all in here and obviously that you know rounded and polished striker block also helps and it may also be part of the springs also but um, one thing we kind of did test was the, I don't know why that camera's doing that, but it keeps cutting off every once in a while. But as you can see, the standard barrel doesn't have as much gunpowder caked on as the ported, because obviously the gases are escaping upwards to help uh, try to assist with the recoil. Um, these both are small guns, shooting both of them. Uh, there's not much of a recoil difference. There's a little bit. I mean, 
you're you're not really going to notice it when you're in a self defense situation. Um, it does help a little bit. Bad thing is, um, of course, you can see all that stuff is on here. Um, see the the hoods are different on these. You see how this one is kind of sloped forward. Um, it's kind of got like a distinct kind of edge there, as you can see right there. And this one overall is just in a downward slope. Which racking the slides, I can kind of feel... Like this one maybe binds up a little bit easier than this one. Um, let's go ahead and show you the frame of the performance center. You see with all these with these ports, um, there's potential for debris to get stuck in those ports in that barrel and it could possibly jam the firearm um, of course that's if you're rolling around in rocks and sand which most people don't in most self-defense situations you're going to be pulling the gun out and that's it you know you're not really going to be shooting but if you do and you happen to drop your gun there's a possibility that you could get something in there that could obstruct the firearm so, uh, you know you most you see most defensive firearms won't have that this is more of a competition kind of thing it does help a little bit of recoil but um, it's not too noticeable the sights are okay as you see is kind of dirty his his fiber ox is kind of dirty but in light um, let's see here. Let's see if I can show the light or something. You can kind of see the light through them. Kind of, kind of helps out during during the daytime. But then again, you know, you could also change the sights on this shield. Um, Triggers better on the performance center. The sights, uh, it's preference. I don't really particularly care for fiber optics. I kind of like uh, night sights if I'm going to do anything. What I'm probably going to do is put big dots on this gun on mine. It's, and probably going to get an apex trigger kit for it. But as you can see, with mine, if I do it just right, I haven't, you can get it to, see it kind of like, you can see that, like it's got some tension there. Let's, let's see if it's like that with this. It's not as much. I think it's part of the the barrel hood but uh, overall the performance center yeah I would recommend it um, I don't like the safety at all but that's a preference uh, to me the safety on this thing you can see it's very minimal Um, I mean, like what he does, he leaves it off. This stays off. Um, there could be a chance someone play devil's advocate. There could be a time where it so happens, gets put on, and you're used to not having it on. You go to pull the trigger, and nothing happens. And the trigger, or the safety here, I don't think is really usable. Um, it's hard to put on. It's a little bit easier to get off, but again, you know, pulling out, it's not like a 1911 safety. You know, that's a big safety there that you can easily get your hand on and actuate. See, if I run my hand up and down on it, every once in a while I'll get it, but 
Um, I don't really like it. Uh, the overall, yeah, I do recommend Performance Center. But then again, you could just buy a standard shield 9mm. I do not recommend the 40s at all. Uh, you could get your standard 9, put sights, and an Apex trigger kit in it. Or you could go for this, and the only thing I would do is change the sights. And, of course, the talon grips. If you have a shield, get talon grips for them. Unless if it's a sh new shield 45, the grips are pretty much the same as this. Um, kind of want to do a quick video on it. Um, also, that way, these grips are the same as the M&Ps used to be. So, it's kind of nice to be able to tell the difference. Because, um, obviously, I have talent grips on mine, so there's no way I could show you what the original grips look like. But to me, if your hands are wet, or even if your hands aren't wet, it just slides around in your hand. It's pretty bad. I don't really know how they even got this far with the gun and not change the grips. I would have definitely done something better about that, because... They're just completely horrible. It's <laughs> I can't even explain how bad they are. Just go fill one. Feels like you're holding an orange. That's what it looks like. That's what it feels like to me. Try holding the orange with your hands wet. I don't know. Um, talking about the 2.0. Um, I got a Safari Land holster for it. Uh, this is actually a really nice holster. It's the 5198 for Smith & Wesson. Um, this holster is very nice. Look how nice close that is to your belt. Um, that's one thing I kind of like about it. Because, I mean, it holds a gun pretty good. Uh, I think you can adjust the tension with this screw here. It looks kind of like a leather. I almost thought it was at first. I'm like, huh. With that kind of little sewing air and the kind of collar but it is kydex it does have felt in there so it helps uh, uh, helps keep the wear down uh, having all kinds of issues card ran out but as I was saying I've been carrying this gun concealed with this holster the way I've been doing it is it's obviously it's winter it's snowing right now unfortunately because otherwise I was going to take both these guns to the range and we were going to do side by side shooting comparison but with the weather it's not going to happen um, but as you see how close this gun sits in this holster and I definitely like that because I'm able to conceal this gun and with this holster with just a, either a jacket or even a t-shirt even. Um, I mean, if you're wearing a t-shirt that's not as long, well, obviously you can kind of see a little bit of a bulge, but also, you can also see this part of the holster from underneath the t-shirt if you're, or if you lean over just right, you may be able to see this much of it. But then again, most people do not pay attention. If you ever open carry or if you ever carried guns, you kind of know that most of your average person will not. They just, you know, everybody's got their face in their phone. They're thinking about this and that. They're, you know, most people don't pay attention. Unless if you're dressed uh, somewhat kind of like a law enforcement, you know, maybe wearing tactical pants, you're, you know, t shirt tucked in, you're open carrying. You know, it may look like you're maybe an, a cop, maybe not, and it, it does draw a little bit more attention. But if you're just carrying, and even if this part of the holster is showing, and you're just wearing a t-shirt and it's over it, most people ain't going to notice. You know, just every everybody just pay attention to their phones and everything nowadays. But also, as you can see, there's... A little bit of mud still left on there from when I threw it on the ground. It's 
kind of stuck in that stippling too. I'm going to have to take a brush or something to it, but probably not. I'm going to just leave it like it is. It shows it's been somewhere. Um, but yeah, definitely if you have one of the new guns, this holster will fit and it does work and you can conceal carry it um, or open carry it, whichever. Uh, I prefer if I'm open carrying to have some type of retention. Uh, I like the Safari Land holsters, the duty holsters, the ones that we use at my work. Um, overall, shield wise, uh, you can fix this one, but with the trigger and sights, it's probably.